So I posted a video before where I lost my drone on top of a mountain. And this is basically the same video, only I'm showing the whole footage from start to end. I obviously lost my drone and my action camera, so the only footage I have is this DVR from my goggles, so the quality isn't great, but it's not, uh, not too bad. So this was flying with my Baby Hawk 2. It's from Emacs, and uh, some would say it's not really suited for long range. At the time I was flying, there wasn't really room for a GPS on the flight controller, you could put one on the drone, but there wasn't enough UART on it. So I recently learned uh, from a buddy of mine that someone actually found a way to make the GPS work with this flight controller, which is really cool. Basically, I think they used uh, pads for the lead strip and things like that. And they put some text into the CLI to basically uh, make GPS work with this exact flight controller. So this actually makes me want a new Baby Hawk even more. I really like this small drone. So this day last Easter I had just been to my parents home and going back the weather was really nice. I just saw the mountain tops and knew I have to stop somewhere, find a good spot and just go flying. Uh, seeing as this was kind of a spur of the moment flight, I did not do any of my usual pre-flight checks. I basically just made sure my camera was recording, hooked up the battery and took off. But uh, about 30 seconds into the flight, I kind of remembered mm, what, uh, what milliwatts am I sending video out on. So I just made sure my drone was flying straight and I went into my goggles and double checked and I was just flying at 25 milliwatts. So I turned that one up. This should probably been like my first red flag for hmm, do I need to check more things before I go up, but alas, I didn't. The flight goes remarkably well. The Emacs Baby Hawk 2, it's a, it's a small 3.5 inch lightweight drone and it's got a crossfire receiver on it. I'm using a Cadex Peanut for action camera on top and I have a 4 cell outline 3000 milliamp hours battery. It's got plenty of juice for going up the mountains and back down again. But I guess I didn't need to worry too much about that. As you can see on the sides, you have a little bit of a breakup. So this is a fun flight. Like I said, it goes slow. But also keep in mind, this is my second time going long range with a drone, not really designed to go long range. So one of the biggest differences with a small drone like this compared to the seven inches that I fly today is that going where you want to go takes a really long time. I don't know exactly what the cruise speed is, but it's not a lot. So yeah, it, it takes you where we want to go, just a lot slower. So one of the things I really want to talk about in this video is pre-flight checks. Going long range, you really need to make sure that you have all your gear and equipment in order. Like I said, there should have been a red flag when I didn't have my air unit transmitting at the right power. As it turns out, after the flight, I didn't have my transmitter turned all the way up. So what really happens up top is I make a turn to go back. And once I make the turn, my antenna that is on the drone, the crossfire antenna, is pointing straight towards me. And that's when you have something called an antenna null. And that is basically when the antenna is at its worst for sending and receiving signals like painting straight towards you it, it couldn't get any signal from my uh, from my transmitter and as i said my transmitter wasn't transmitting enough power so that combined with the antenna hitting null made my drone go into fail safe mode and since i didn't have a gps on my drone basically fell straight down it just cut power to the motors and it just fell straight down if I would have a GPS, you have something called a GPS rescue. It's not like a return to home function, although it has gotten better over the years. What it does, it makes the flight controller takes control over the drone and it tries to use the GPS location data and fly it back towards you. So if I would have GPS rescue, I would probably be fine. Another thing you can do is delay the time from the drone not receiving any signals until it drops with more than a few milliseconds, like say a couple of seconds. 
If it had just hold those last signal inputs it got, it might have been enough that I got my signal back and I could gain control and fly back down again. Things like this is what you need to consider before you go out flying. I have a GPS on my freestyle quad, which is kind of useless if you're flying in a bando or flying in the forest, you're not above the trees. Uh, if GPS rescue were to kick in, it would probably just crash into the trees, crash into a building. So I do have a GPS, but I have it set to drop. So if I lose signal, it would just drop. But the cool thing about the GPS, you have the location data from where it's located in case of a crash. You also get the speed, you get uh, some telemetry you wouldn't have without it, like how many meters this is away from me. So you can use that data to find the quad. Also, if I were to go a little bit longer with my freestyle drone, I can just go into beta flight and I can program it to actually have return to home or GPS rescue. So I have the options. Be aware of what options you have before you go out and fly. On my long range drones that I use only for long range, I always have them set to GPS rescue. My settings, I always have maximum altitude. And that's just because if I lose signal, it's probably just because I went behind something. So I, I want it to go up so I can gain signal back. And once I gain signal back, I can regain control and I can fly it back manually. Probably different options you can do to make it come back, but just, just choose whatever scenario you think will fit your type of flying the best. Make a choice. Don't just let beta flight do the settings for you. Like if you choose to use the default settings, that's a choice you made. So at least make that choice. I I was kind of devastated. Like this, this was my only drone that was suitable for anything like this. And now I lost it on a stupid whim. Like I'm, I'm just gonna fly up here because it's pretty outside and I didn't do the necessary checks to make sure I, I was safe flying it, but uh, Hey, I, I learned from this, like always make your pre-flight checks before you go. It's, it's not funny losing a drone. The drone costs a lot of money. The action camera on top costs a lot of money. The battery costs a lot of money. So I was looking at maybe six, 7,000 kroners, especially like six, $700 for everything, if not more. So yeah, it was a big, big hit, but at least I had an excuse to buy a new drone and a new action camera. So that's that. What I'm flying today is even closer to like twelve, fifteen hundred dollars if not more. So it's it's expensive once you crash. And that's one of the reasons I always get like an adrenaline rush when I'm flying. The stakes are high, but uh, the results are often amazing. Always do pre-flight check. Check your antennas, check your video strength, uh, your transmitter strength, your GPS signals and that the home point is set before you take off. Look at these, what you call them? Like the snow overhangs? I don't know. They're really cool, but they're really dangerous. Like if you were to go up on a mountain like this, stay away from the edges. And as you see here, this is why you should stay away. Never go out to the tip of a mountain in the winter time. Unless you see rocks or you know the mountain really well, don't go out to the edge. Don't go out to look down, stay way in where you know it's safe. So this is basically my second time going long range with this phone. And as I go higher and higher, I start getting excited. It's exhilarating going this far and this high. The rewards for a good flight is the experience and the footage. And the risk is losing everything. Like flying close to the ridge, getting view about the mountains is incredible. up here is just great this is where I'm ready to go turn back down it just falls down and this is where panic mode ensues 
I oh I wish I filmed this but I, I just try everything I try to use turtle mode turtle mode just basically pushes the propellers in reverse trying to flip it over if it lands on its head but there's no use my goggles have gone dark I yeah I, I can't see anything I don't get any OSD I even tried to move around like go further back got into my car I drove to another location maybe I could get a signal from here but nothing so my guess is it just went head first antennas down into the snow and I, I couldn't get a signal so some people said couldn't you just go back up and retrieve it I do have skis that I put skins underneath so you can walk pretty much straight up this is a mountain people go skiing on but uh, today was pretty much the biggest avalanche risk you can possibly have we had had a lot of snow and some wind so it, it was not a risk I was willing to take and at first I thought it was maybe lying on top of the ledge but looking back on the video a few times it seems like it, it actually goes off on the steep end so even if I was able to go up I, I, I wouldn't be able to retrieve it like I said don't go out on the ledges and I wouldn't be able to Another thing would be to maybe use uh, like a Mavic Air or something to go up and try and retrieve it, but you would still need to find it. You would still need to go some way up because I think most modern DJI drones have like a height limit to 500 meters and this is like a thousand meters. So there's, there's a lot of things to consider. Uh, I did have some hope that I could go back up and retrieve it in the summer. I've actually gone up twice, both times I brought my drones, I tried to fly around, look for it. It's, it's basically worse than looking for a needle in a haystack. Uh, I, might, I might post some of my retrieval effort videos, kind of entertaining in themselves, but yeah. I haven't found the drone, it's been over a year, I will probably never find it, but... Um, it's fun. It's a nice it's a nice trip to go up in the summer or uh, late fall and just go go look for it. Bring my dog, bring my drones and just make a day out of it, but I I doubt I will ever find it again. If I'm lucky, maybe someday someone finds it. It got my telephone number. It has my pilot ID, so if someone finds it, hopefully they will give me a call and we can be reunited, but I, I think it went up the steep end, it could have gone down with the snow, we have like avalanches and stuff, when the snow melts we have rivers, streams, and it, it's probably down in a hole, stuck behind a rock somewhere, and yeah, I don't think I'm ever gonna find it, so...